Good afternoon from Lockdown London and hello from me, Dr Dermot Hudson, Chairman of the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea, Chairman of the UK-Korean Friendship Association and Official Delegate of the Korean Friendship Association with the United Kingdom and President of the Association for the Study of Sungham Politics. Today I'm taking some time out from the arduous task of painting the flat and tidying up uh, to talk about the 40th anniversary of the Kwangju uprising and the Kwangju massacre. And if you look at the mainstream media, for example, I've just looked at uh, Google News, uh, you'll see virtually no mention of either the Kwangju uprising or the Kwangju massacre. Now, there's a reason for this, uh, because it... Uh, totally demolishes the false image of South Korea that has been built up deliberately by the corporate mainstream media and by paid uh, uh, servants of the South Korean puppet regime. Uh, you know, this uh, false image of uh, so-called uh, freedom, uh, in inverted commas, democracy, in inverted commas, and prosperity. Uh, what happened uh, 40 years ago in May 1980 uh, totally proves that uh, this uh, is uh, the wrong impression of South Korea. There is a uh, false image and indeed uh, you won't see uh, publications like NK News mention the uh, Kwangju uh, massacre or Kwangju uprising uh, because if they did, they would lose their funding from the South Korean puppet state and from the US imperialists. So uh, this is something uh, they and a lot of um, so-called Korea experts do not like to... Uh, talk about or if they talk about it uh, you know it's not mentioned uh, very much. Uh, so what is the Kwangju or what was the Kwangju uprising and what was the Kwangju massacre? Uh, the 40th uh, anniversary of which uh, was on Monday the 18th uh, you know two two days ago. Well first uh, you know, I think it's useful to give uh, a bit of historical uh, background uh, and set the scene, as it were. Uh, as we know, South Korea is not a democracy. It's not even a real state. It was an artificial entity created uh, by U.S. bayonets. Uh, in September 1945, the US troops landed in South Korea three weeks after liberation had uh, taken place and occupied the southern part of Korea, you know, south of the 38th uh, parallel. And they enforced direct US military rule for three years. The People's Committees, which were organs of popular power, were dissolved and the Communist Party was banned. A corrupt uh, uh, reactionary, uh, Syngman Rhee, uh, who'd lived in the US for many years, uh, was brought back into South Korea on a US plane and he was made the puppet ruler of South Korea in 1948. So thus the US uh, switch from direct military rule uh, to rule through a uh, puppet regime, a puppet administration. Syngman Rhee, uh, as we know, was a, a massively corrupt individual, uh, which resulted in him being toppled in the April popular uprising in 1960. Subsequently, uh, the... U.S. imperialists instigated Park Jung-hee, a former Japanese collaborator, to stage a military coup in May 1961, and about 100,000 people were killed in uh, this military uh, coup. Uh, this uh, military fascist regime, it became a sort of prototype 
for uh, neo-colonial rule in different parts of the world and uh, it was the first of a number of military uh, regimes such as the one in, in Brazil, the Brazilian military dictatorship and because uh, the infamous uh, Pinochet regime in Chile and uh, it's interesting that the uh, Park uh, Chung-hee fascist uh, regime in South Korea um, actually did forge ties with the Brazilian uh, fascist military dictatorship and actually did send South Koreans uh, to live in Brazil but I mean that's uh, another story. Park Chung-hee was uh, by all accounts uh, a ferocious uh, fascist uh, in 1972 uh, uh, he again declared martial law and imposed the so-called use in or revitalization system very much a sort of poor man's Hitler in uh, East uh, Asia uh, however he became a discredited uh, figure very very corrupt uh, and in fact even used US aid funds to bribe US uh, congressmen uh, which I think greatly uh, annoyed uh, the the U US and increasingly the US saw him as both an embarrassment and a hindrance uh, and also at this uh, time you had the US defeat in the Vietnam War you later had the Iranian uh, revolution. So uh, old style puppet regimes like South Korea were getting very discredited and very isolated particularly as some uh, Asian countries uh, turned towards non-alignment uh, to uh, distancing themselves from having a very open and very close relationship with uh, the US imperialists. The US decided to get rid of Pak Chung Hee and uh, instigated the director of the Korean Central Intelligence Agency to uh, assassinate Pak Chung Hee uh, in October 1979. And uh, these uh, events are humorously uh, depicted in the film The President's Last Bang. Uh, which is not a progressive film, it's not anti-imperialist, but uh, yeah, it uh, shows South Korea in a poor light, but it doesn't really get uh, uh, deeply into what uh, really happened. Then uh, in December 1979, the Chun fascist regime came into power, and Chun Han was someone who'd been uh, trained in the US at the West Point Military Academy uh, and uh, came to uh, had also served in uh, Vietnam uh, as an officer in the South Korean forces there and never forget that uh, South Korea participated in the war against the Vietnamese people on the side of the US and uh, Chun's uh, unit uh, carried out uh, many atrocities in Vietnam. In uh, May 1980 uh, Chun was uh, faced with increasing opposition uh, in South Korea from uh, different quarters not only students and workers but uh, also some figures associated with the previous regime were opposing him and uh, uh, some uh, politicians. So on May the 17th he declared martial law in South Korea and banned all political organisations, banned gatherings, forbid people from uh, leaving their workplaces and offices, very draconian fascist rule. The people of uh, Kwangju City in the southeast of South Korea rose up in revolt on the 18th of May 1980 and they were able to seize weapons from the South Korean puppet armed forces and uh, take control of the city and this lasted for nine days and this was uh, 
uh, a great anti-fascist popular uprising and a great example uh, to the oppressed peoples of the third world uh, in their struggles for national liberation. The South Korean puppet regime responded with the utmost ferocity and violence. Uh, firstly, they actually uh, moved units away from the front line with the DPRK, uh, with the uh, say-so of the US, because at that time, the South Korean puppet armed forces were totally under control of the US imperialists and could not move without uh, their permission without their say so uh, and this fact uh, you know proved that that the uh, the idea of the so-called North Korean threat or North Korean invasion was absolute nonsense because uh, you know they basically took uh, troops away from the front line with the DPRK and instead, instead sent them to fight not against the DPRK, not against the Korean People's Army, but against their own people. And uh, the uh, several uh, divisions of paratroops were sent into Gwangju City, uh, as well as uh, uh, tanks and helicopters. And the extreme violence was used against the uh, citizens of Gwangju who'd, who'd risen up against uh, fascist rule. Uh, they were not, not just shot, but they were sort of bayoneted. Uh, flamethrowers were used. People were run over with tanks. People were shot from helicopters. Uh, there are stories about the uh, South Korean puppet armed forces being high on uh, drugs and alcohol and doing things like uh, bayoneting pregnant women uh, and other un unspeakable things. A total of 5,000 people were killed in Gwangju City and about 14,000 uh, injured. And of course, uh, no one has actually uh, been brought a book called to account for uh, this uh, massacre and the culprits uh, went unpunished and uh, another culprit that went unpunished was the US itself because as I just said a few minutes ago uh, the US uh, actually uh, gave uh, the order for the South Korean puppet army uh, to redeploy uh, troops from the front line and the US uh, in fact uh, ordered the massacre on the 22nd of uh, May 1980. There was a meeting of the US National Security Council and uh, one of the US figures said the Gwangju uprising must be smashed with an iron fist. The uh, US sent a couple of aircraft carriers to South Korea including the USS Coral Sea and uh, US troops were on standby and it is actually said that some US troops actually participated in the Gwangju massacre and uh, were running uh, the checkpoints uh, in uh, Gwangju uh, city. What uh, this uh, goes to uh, prove uh, is that uh, South Korea is, is not a democracy and uh, that US imperialism is indeed the enemy of the South Korean people because they were behind uh, this uh, ma uh, massacre. And today uh, we salute the struggle of the South Korean people for independence, democracy and uh, peaceful reunification. And it's very important to support the struggle of the South Korean people, uh, particularly against the revival of the fascist forces that exist in South Korea and that were responsible uh, for that massacre. And we are also proud uh, to support uh, the work of the anti-imperialist National Democratic Front of South Korea, the underground anti-imperialist uh, 
uh, fighting vanguard of the uh, South Korean uh, people. So, uh, in conclusion, I say long live the uh, memories of those who fell in Gwangju City uh, 40 years ago. And I'd also like to just quickly uh, express my solidarity uh, with uh, those YouTube channels, uh, pro DPRK YouTube channels, that are under attack uh, from NK News, the CIA and South Korean National Intelligence Front organization uh, that uh, uh, is smearing uh, different uh, supporters and friends of the DPRK. Anyway, thank you for listening uh, to this uh, video. Please subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed. And uh, above all, please uh, stay safe uh, in these difficult times. Thank you and goodbye.